All right, let's get right into the word of God tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the words tonight that we receive. We receive the words sown on good ground. Let it produce in our lives what you sent it to produce. We bind every hindering force. We bind every demonic force. We bind every bit of distraction. Anything that would try to keep your people from receiving the word, let it flow unhindered, unchecked by any outside force. We pray tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. All right. Um, let's get right into this tonight. Praise the Lord. You can just remain seated. We'll read our scripture later. We'll read the scripture later. So amen. So um, we, we've been talking about this uh, five essentials for a financial increase, yes, sir. right? And uh, so I brought my little book here. Yeah. You know, one of my last copies of the little book here. We have to get some more of those. Yes. And uh, I believe this book has been a blessing and will continue to be a blessing to people. If we would, would uh, go over it, review it, do it, go over it, review it, do it, review it, do it, review it, do it, review it, do it. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen. None, none of the word works if you don't do it, if you don't right. work it. Amen? To right. so just hear it and get excited doesn't produce anything. We need to do something to get results from the word of God. Amen. All right, now, we're, we're talking tonight our, on part six of this series, and we're entitled in this, this part six, Don't Quit on Your Harvest. Don't quit on your, Don't harvest. Don't quit on your harvest. Don't quit on your harvest. Don't quit on your harvest. We've been looking again, and this book is based on uh, the book of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verse 26 through 29, where Jesus, in his own words, teaches us how the kingdom of God operates. He said the kingdom of God is as if, a man should scatter seed on the ground, yep. right? Yes, That's sir. Mark 4, 26. It is as if, or the kingdom of God operates this way. A man should scatter seed. He wasn't just talking about sowing and reaping in terms of finance. He's talking about the whole kingdom works this way. Yes. Jesus Christ was a seed that God sowed into the earth yes, to get us, Amen. right? The Bible, uh, the Bible talked about, uh, called the, the first disciples, the first fruits. Yes. Right. You understand right. that? The, the first disciples were called like first work. fruits. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, Jesus Christ was a seed that was that was sown to get first fruits. We are continuing fruit, amen, and continuing to gather more fruit. Praise the Lord. So the whole kingdom of God operates this way, and so uh, we looked at the first message in this series was entitled "Applying for a Heavenly Grant." All right, and so hopefully y'all went back and did that. Praise God. We talked about increase more and more. May the Lord, or the King James says the Lord, will, he will increase you more and more. Then uh, the third message we talked about was sowing brings increase. And that's when we started to get into the gist of this book here. That sowing is what's going to bring the increase. Amen? Not your job. Amen? Not the government. Right? Not some special uh, check that you get. That's a, that's a lockdown um, check. You know what I mean by that? It's fixed. Fixed income, you don't want to be on a fixed income. The people on fixed income don't even like fixed income. Right? Well, if it's fixed income, you can unfix it. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people, I ain't on no fixed income. How much does your check change? If your paycheck doesn't fluctuate, or I don't mean fluctuate up and down, if it doesn't uh, float upward, it's fixed. Well, I got a raise last, uh, last year. All right? They just fixed it a little higher. You got it? Now, nothing wrong with having a check because you need seed. But the way to get increase, it comes from sowing, all right? Sowing brings increase. Then we said uh, the fourth message was that sowing, I'm sorry, your increase is in your seed. Because seed is a single element that God gave to man for, for continual material increase. Amen. Remember we said this, we established this, we proved it with, with Joseph in Genesis, I think it was 47 or so, about how, yeah. how uh, provision will always run out. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Unless you convert part of the provision into seed. That's right. Okay? God doesn't mean for the provision to run out. That's why he told you, I put the seed in the fruit. Yes. I put the seed in the herb. Fruit and the herb, that's provision. I put the seed in the provision. You have to have enough discerning wisdom enough, enough um, uh, sense and wisdom by God to pull the seed out of the provision and sow it. That's way, that way you'll continue to increase. You got to convert it to seed. Now, let me show you one, one story here. Y'all know this story. 
uh, 1 Kings 17. Yes. I'm going to go through this very quickly because this is, this is what, uh, this just helps illuminate what we're talking about here. 1 Kings 17. Y'all know this story very well, most of you. In case you don't, let's look at it. 1 Kings 17, verse 8. This is when Elijah, the man of God, is on the run from Jezebel. He's on the run. He's done a mighty work with God. Uh, he's, I'm sorry, no, not, not yet. He's not on the run yet. I, I got ahead of myself. He's actually, he's declaring a drought. There's a prophetic drought. You got that? Prophetic drought. And the thing about a prophetic drought is you got to stay with God because if you don't, prophetic drought will affect the prophet. Got it? So he had to keep hearing from God because God had given a commandment. You look early in, in 1 Kings 17, he said, I commanded the ravens to take care of you. But now when that provision runs out, he's now going to send him to another place. He said, I commanded a widow to take care of you, okay? 1 Kings 17, 8, then the word of the Lord came to him saying, arise, go to where? I want to make sure everybody's with me. Arise, go to where? which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I've commanded a widow there to provide for you, provision for you, okay? So he arose. Now, now understand, if he said, I've commanded her to provide for you, she must have provision. She has provision. All right, verse 10, so he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called her to called uh, to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it or prepare my provision for myself and my son, that we may eat it, come on, and die. And die. So what, what does she know? What does she know right off the bat? Her provision is running out. She knows she's at the end of her provision. She knows this. Now, uh, the beautiful thing about this story is most people mess this story up because they don't teach the whole, or know the whole council, or maybe just they, it hadn't been revealed to them yet. Uh, through further study and, and, and revelation from God, that this story isn't about Elijah being taken care of. People have, have taught this. This is about God taking care of the man of God. It's not, that was a byproduct, but that was not the purpose of this story. The point of this story is about this woman being taken care of. Jesus said over in Luke chapter 4, when he gave about this, his, story, his thing about spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to so on and so forth. And the people talked about, you know, well, aren't you just Mary's boy? you the carpenter's son and so forth. Don't we know you? And he said, a prophet's not without honor except in his own country and among his own people and so forth. And then he says to them, he said that when the drought hit, when the famine hit, that Elijah wasn't sent to any of these widows in Israel, but he was sent to that woman in Zarephath. He wasn't talking about God taking care of Elijah. He was said in, this, in that drought, the widows in Israel didn't get, didn't get anything. He said the widow in Zarephath got something. God sent Elijah to her. So that this story is about her. Not about the man of God. All right? So she's going to eat it and die as far as she knows. And Elijah said to her, do not fear about running out and dying. Uh-huh. Yeah. If your provision runs out, you die. Go in and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. Well, the audacity of this preacher. And bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. He's trying to get his needs met. No, he's not. He's trying to get her needs met. What he's doing, he's saying, okay, take your provision that you do have and convert part of it to seed. And when you convert part of your provision to seed, now your seed will produce lasting provision. Now, what, what would have happened if she had, had refused this? She would have run out and died. And her son. But watch, watch what happens. He said, for thus says the Lord, God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up. The bin of flour, your provision shall not be used up. Nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. In other words, 
um, by this seed, you're going to produce a lasting provision yes. in the midst of a drought, in the midst of a depression or a recession. Yes. So she went away and did, and did, according to the word of Elijah, and she and her household, she and he rather, and her household ate how long? Many days, a long time. In other words, the point is, they ate all the way until the word of God came to pass that this drought was over. They made it. So whereas the provision would have run out, because she converted part of it into seed, it lasted. Amen? All right, so we, again, just bringing this point, that your increase is in your seed. All right, now, we, the last message we did last Wednesday was uh, good ground, good harvest. Okay? Good ground, good harvest. We were back in Mark 4. And uh, Mark identified, Jesus rather, identified four types of ground, wayside, stony, thorny, and good. So what we surmised was 75% of ground is not good. <laughs> okay? Right? So you can't just scatter anywhere. Amen? Now, you can be nice. We said that. You should be kind. You should... Uh, uh, be generous. Gen the man who has a generous eye will be blessed. Amen? But when you're talking about trying to get increase, I, ain't, I don't care nothing about increase. Stop lying. I just want to help people. I got you. But you can't help people once your provision runs out. Once your provision runs out, you have no capacity to help people. You, God wants to increase your capacity to help people. So you have to work the increase side. I mean, it's amazing how that's crept into the body of Christ for centuries. Well, you know, you, well, I'm, not, I'm not looking for a return. I hear people say that. I, I just want to give. I don't look for no return. Yeah. What? Yeah, well, you, you, that provision will run out. Yeah. If you never get a return, eventually you won't have anything to give any longer. That's right. You got it? You have to have increase. Yeah. So if we want a good harvest, we got to make sure we carefully identify good ground but we can sow our seed. And the number one thing I want you to uh, get, and I, I think I said this in the book, in that chapter about that, was to listen to the Holy Ghost. Yes. If you listen to the Holy Ghost, he'll tell you when to sow, where to sow, how to sow, what to sow, how much. He'll tell you all that stuff. And if he, told, if he tells you something, you know, rejoice, because that's guaranteed. There's no, there's no question about that. Amen? Now, all right, y'all ready to keep going now? Are y'all ready to keep going now? Okay, because now we're about to move into the hard part. Okay? Because you can decide, all right, I'm going to be a sower. And then you can go and find you some of seed. And then you can let God give you some good ground. And you can sow your seed. But now the hard part begins. The hardest phase in this whole process is right here. It's the time where you now need a season. Because harvest doesn't come immediately after seed. Oh, I wish it did, but it doesn't happen that way. And what happens, most people quit on their harvest. Most people lose out on their harvest because they don't, they don't endure this particular phase of the process. So I want to make sure I help you tonight be able to endure this particular phase, phase of the process, all right? Because this is the time where, where y'all ever heard of separation anxiety? Yes. <laughs> separation anxiety, that's, you know, when somebody's used to being around somebody and all of a sudden you're not around them. <laughs> oh, God, where? Oh, Lord. Babies experience it all the time. They, mama, 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 mama. Separation anxiety. That's what, that's what happens to people with their seed. I said, that's what happens to people in their seed. People sow the seed and they, they, that was their precious. I'm talking not, well, let, me, let, me, let me just go back. I'm talking about precious seed. So a, lot, a lot of people don't, a lot of people aren't even in line for harvest because, well, I should say a big harvest because they're not sowing precious seed. Precious seed is precious because it's special to you or it hurts when it's gone. And, and you know, people sow, if you keep sowing stuff and it don't, it don't ever hurt you, it ain't precious seed. So there's, don't, don't be in talking about I'm believing God for this big harvest. There ain't no big harvest because ain't no precious seed. Uh, what's this scripture here? Uh, oh, you better believe it. You know when you sow precious seed because you get separation anxiety. Look at 
Corinthians 9, 6. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 6. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back now. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. With this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. I, I think the NIV says it different. Look, get the NIV for me. I don't, this is not in my notes, but uh, no. No, it's not. It's one of the modern translations. It says something like, if you sow a little, you reap a little. If you sow a lot, you reap a lot. Yeah. In other words, there's no mystery to that. If you keep sowing, if you sow something that's not precious, you're not going to get a precious harvest. You, you're not, you're not going to get a harvest that knocks you off your feet. Y'all okay. understand? I mean, you, you, God wants us to get harvests that simply knock us off our feet. We're like, oh, God, Lord have mercy. Praise God. Well, I mean, it's, it's just big. Or it's just grand. Got it? But if we never sow precious seed, there's no precious harvest to come back. You got it? So when I'm, when I'm talking about seed sowing, I'm talking about precious seed sowing. Got it? Because that's what will get you that separation anxiety. Y'all, y'all ever, anybody ever have uh, what's called buyer's remorse? Oh, yeah. Right? You go buy something, and the moment you walk out the store, right? You go sign on a loan for something or whatever, and the moment you would you're like, oh, snap, what did I just do? What did I just do? Now, I'm not saying you should have giver's remorse or sower's remorse. But I'm saying that feeling in your stomach sometimes, that not, that's when you know, Lord, what, because you, I mean, I just gave $25 and I was $50 short of my light bill. Ooh. And you feel that thing in your stomach, but it's precious. And what the devil wants to do is to get you to, to pluck up what was planted before it's time to pluck up what was planted. He wants to get you to cancel out the, 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 the working, the automatic working on your seed so that it doesn't come up in your life. And I guarantee you, every one of us can probably testify we've done it once or twice. Come on now, I know. Ain't nobody saying, that. yeah, yeah, maybe. No, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. I'm talking about if you've ever given precious. Where, where it hurts. Precious, ladies and gentlemen, precious seed hurts. It hurts. You still get flesh. Oh, my God. What did I do? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because what's happened is the seed has left your hand, but the harvest hadn't made it back in yet. Right? So this is that separation time. I mean, it'd be nice if the moment I, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's not, it's what, what they call in MLM circles, delayed gratification. You ever heard of delayed gratification? Uh, whereas whereas uh, I do work now, but I don't get any reward or any return for it till later, sometimes much later. Yeah. This is not like going to the soda machine and buying a soda or buying your Snickers bar at the snack machine. You know, the, you put your money in, you immediately get something back. Well, so and see, isn't like that. There's a separation time. And it's during that time when the pressure comes on from the enemy because he's going to remind you of, of the bills you had due. And he's going to remind you of the, of the shoes that you wanted or needed. And all of a sudden, the shoes come on sale tomorrow. Oh, that happens, see? The shoes, they come on sale tomorrow. Dog, I just sold that seed. And, you know, let me, let me call Pastor. Uh, did you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, listen, that's never happened to me, but I know people that that's happened to. I know pastors who've told me that they've had people call them and, and ask for their seed back. And you gladly give it back because it's your seed. But you don't know what you've just done. You snatched. You, you just dug the seed out the ground. And it's happened. It's, it happens. Hallelujah. But don't quit on your harvest. All harvest takes time. All harvest takes time. Now, I know y'all are smart and y'all faith, faith giants and y'all know this, but let's walk through this tonight. Okay, because this, is a, this might be a seed time and harvest refresher for us. Amen? Because when we get into, you know, we get excited about accelerated harvest. We get excited about accelerated harvest, don't we? 
But you know, most harvest is not accelerated. Right. To, to get accelerated harvest is, is, is as rare as, as, as getting uh, your arm to heal instantly as opposed to over six weeks or six months. That has to be a supernatural working of God that, that, that accelerates something that's, that's, not, that's not the norm. Now, it's the norm to God. God can do it any time. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. But most of us don't operate on that level every day yet. No. Right. 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 But a lot of times we look for our, for our seed time and harvest to work that way, and it doesn't. Come on. Amen? Amen? Go to Genesis chapter 4. Mm -hmm. yeah. Genesis 4. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Genesis 4. I don't want us to quit on our harvest because, listen, every harvest that we, that we quit on and leave out there, the devil gets it. That's right. And God, God is, if, I could, if you allow me to say this, tired of letting the devil or seeing the devil get what belongs to God's people. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My wife and I, was, we saw something on TV last night, these people, the it's kind of like lifestyles of the, of the rich and famous as a modern day lifestyle of the super rich. Did you see that? Did you see that people over in Africa and stuff? Last yeah, night? Yeah, yeah. These, pe these people, I mean, they, what, what, they, what they do for, it's just because they have money. You know. it's just cause. There's, there's a guy down in Boca Raton. He's got a 27,000 square foot house, and uh, he's trying to sell it. And they say, well, why are you selling it? I want to build a bigger one. I think he's selling it for, what is it, $36 million, 20 something like that? Like $36 million is the most expensive house in Boca Raton currently. Uh, and he's selling it. Why you want to sell it? I, I want to build a bigger one. He had the Star Trek all Yeah, remember you saw that? Like, all of them. <laughs> well, I don't want all that. Well, you don't have to have all that. But, you know, we used to go around saying, I wish I had enough money to buy an elephant, boy. <laughs> I wish I had enough money, I do, to buy an elephant. What would you do, if, do with an elephant? I don't want one, I just wish I had the money to buy one. That's what we, we just go around saying that. See, when you have the money, you have options now. Amen? Hallelujah. God might need you to buy an elephant. Y'all got that? All right, Genesis 4, verse 1. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain. Well, that's the seed time of harvest right there. I was, I was about to skip that. Now, Adam knew Eve, his, his wife, and she conceived and bore. And bore. How long did it take? Time. Nine months. Nine months. Yes, sir. You understand how that process works? Yes. Between knew and bore is nine, nine. nine months. Yes, sir. Conception is immediate. Yes. Hallelujah. I like when you're traveling between here and places up north, uh, when I say north, like Georgia, Alabama, in the Bible Belt area, all the billboards, they, they have Christian billboards everywhere. They, I mean, just things about God, Jesus coming back, you, you know, you're ready. But uh, one of the ones they talk about all the time is, is babies and how babies within, you know, 17 days, eight days or whatever, they're already got a heartbeat and all this kind of stuff. See, conception is immediate. Conception is immediate. So what, what the, whole, the whole gist of those billboards is to say, don't do anything to harm this baby, you know, like abortion, anti-abortion, because there's, there's, some, there's something that's in there. Well, I don't feel anything. There's something in there. By the time, by the time you realize you're pregnant, the baby's already got a heartbeat, brain, everything being formed, everything's going. By the time you even realize it. But I don't feel it. You don't have to feel it. If a seed has been sown, yes! something's coming. You understand that? Yes! This is what I'm trying to get you to understand. It, 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 <laughs> you don't have to see anything or feel anything. If seed has been sown, something's working. You got it? All right. So Adam knew Eve, so on and so forth. Verse 2. Then she bore again. All right. This time his brother Abel. Now, Abel is a keeper of the sheep, but Cain, watch this, was a what? Tiller of the ground. Tiller of the ground. Why do you till ground? To, seed in it. to put seed in it. Yes. That's the only reason you till ground. You don't till ground for fun. You till ground to sow seed. Right? right? So, so, so Cain 
is a sower. Got it? So he was a tiller of the ground. Now look at verse 3, and this doesn't help you right here. Verse 3, y'all there? And in the process of time. <laughs> y'all got it? So here he is. He's a, he's a tiller, which means, in, by implication, he's a sower. But notice it took a process of time before he could bring forth any fruit. Because all seed needs the process of time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Genesis 8.22. Go over there real quick. Genesis 8.22. Y'all know this one. This one y'all thought I was going earlier, but I tricked y'all. Genesis 8.22. While the earth remains. Come on. Seed time and harvest. Cold and heat. Winter and summer. And day and night. What? Shall not... So as long as there's an earth, there will be seed, time, and harvest. Seed time. Yeah, seed time. All between seed and harvest is time. Time. The process of time. In the process of time, Cain brought the, the fruit of the ground. In the process of time. In the process of time. Time. Everybody say time. time. My seed needs time. Say it again. My seed needs time. Y'all got to catch, I need y'all to hear that because, because there are accelerated seasons, right? right. We know, we, we've learned about the feast seasons, right? Yeah. We learned about Passover, we learned about Pentecost, we just had that Pentecost last, uh, last Sunday, two Sundays ago, whenever it was. And yeah. then we have a uh, feast of uh, tabernacles later on this year, right? And those are times of accelerated harvest. But you know, you can sow seed any time during the year. And, but it's still, it's going to take some time. <laughs> All right? We already said you put a, put a, a baby, you know, a seed for babies in the ground, it takes nine months. For, to get the finished product, to hear the bell, ding! <laughs> I mean, you can take it out before time, but it ain't going to be ready. Right? You want to hear the ding? Okay. So it takes nine months for that. So, so with every, every seed... <laughs> Human dings when the water breaks, amen. Yes. So, so, so every seed needs that time. Even in an accelerated time, even in an, ex, in an accelerated season, don't look for it tomorrow. Somebody might say, well, I gave them Passover, and I didn't get my harvest yet. I ain't giving it no Pentecost. Well, oh, you thought it was accelerated meant it's just going to happen in a month. Come on now, you're teaching up. Come okay, on. did you sow corn, did you sow wine, or did you sow oil? There's a difference. If you sow corn, which is a cheap seed, you can, you can get a quick harvest. If you sow wine, that's a little more, more precious seed than, than, than corn. That takes a lot longer. But if you sow oil seed, which is olive oil, for olive seed, it takes a long time. Well, I want acceleration. It's still, it's still going to take you a little minute. <laughs> you understand? But once it arrives... The process of time, right, in due season, in due season, in due time. You got it? We know the scripture. I don't have to turn to it, but Amos 9, 13, we like to this quote the scripture. The days, those, uh, no, let's go to it. Amos 9, Amos 9, get on the screen for me. Amos 9, 13. Behold, come on, read it. The days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him who sows seed. The mountains shall drip with, come on, and all the hills. Woo -wee. Boy, people will get you crunk off this scripture here. Boy, yeah, the days are coming, boy. The plowman is going to overtake the reaper. Try the grapes going to overtake the him and so as soon as you can get seed in the ground, boy, it's going to be things coming up. We get excited. I got I get excited about that. And he, but notice what he said. Those days are coming. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Those days are coming. It didn't say they're here. They're coming. He's talking in, in this scripture, if you read the whole context, about the kingdom age. We're not in the kingdom age yet. We're still in the church age. Y'all understand what I mean by that? 
the kingdom age is after Jesus Christ comes and establishes the millennial reign on earth. That's the kingdom age. We're still up until Jesus Christ comes, we're in the church age. So we're not in those days yet. So as long as we're still in these days, we need seed, time, and harvest. We need the process of time. Praise God. So we can get excited. woo Somebody get on TBN and preach it. The day's coming. And boy, we sent all our $1,000 there. Boy, I'm about to get a quick harvest. <laughs> no, the days are coming. Yes, sir. I, see, y'all don't like this one. Yes, y'all wanted me to tell you, boy, God about to excel. God about to bring this. Y'all want me to tell you about to come tomorrow, boy. You don't want, you don't want to see to come up tomorrow. No. That we know from Mark 4, that means it has no roots. You don't want anything springing up immediately. <laughs> you don't want premature babies. You don't want, you don't want a premature uh, cake out the oven. Is that right, D? You don't want your, your hilltop wings premature. Man, those things all red. I'm like, right? Put that back in the grease, man. Something wrong with this stuff. Right? So those days are coming. Bumper crops do not spring up immediately. Bumper crops do not spring up immediately. They need time for roots to grow. Go back to Mark 4 here. Mark 4. Yeah, say that. Say, tell your neighbor, don't quit on your harvest. Tell them it's on the way. Don't quit on it. Tell them again, it's on the way. Pass the prophetically speak a word about acceleration. I, I, I can, I will, as God leads, but your regular seed, come on, come on. it's the process of time. As a matter of fact, what, what you want, what you really want in your life is that process of time. Because it, as you continue to sow seed, you'll continue to reap a harvest in process of time. So you ought to be getting... Now continual harvest. That's right. Never run out. You're not on provision any longer. Yeah. You're living on your increase. Yeah. Come on, that's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Some things I would say, but I, I oh, praise God. On, Mark 4, verse 5 and 6. <laughs> some fell on stony ground. No, you know. Well, I, I'm, I'm just saying, it's, it's personal, though, is what I'm trying to say. You know, sometimes you say personal things, people get offended. You know, you know my wife and I were talking about the other day. She was saying, John, I really, really be, believe the dam is broken in our lives. Amen. And I was saying, you know, I, 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 believe, I believe we're at a point. I don't know if it's, if, if it's busted open, but it's now there's such a constant flow yeah. that before long, it's going to be busted wide open. You know what I'm saying? But we're now at a constant flow. Well, that's just because, that ain't just because nothing. It's, it's because we had a constant flow out. And at, and, and at times when we didn't have nothing, we were finding seed to sow. <laughs> See, we've been, we've been, not only have we learned this, We've been doing this now for so long, now process of time is, is catching up. You see? So now people, they get mad about you in your process of time. You don't get no need to get mad in process of time. If you sow your seed, process of time will show up for you too. It's a law. It'll work for anybody. Right? Right? If little BJ jumps off the roof of this church, He's not going to go up, he's going down. Right? Right. right. Yeah. right? Yeah. Now, if his father jumps off the same roof, where is he going? Come on now. Yeah. Down. Because it's a law of gravity, it's a law. It'll work for anybody who will jump off the roof. <laughs> and people say, well, no, that is, that's because that's you're a pastor. I can name plenty of pastors who are not in the flow. 
You know why they're not in the flow? Because they never learn and, and appropriate it flowing out. They always trying to get, 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 trying to receive, 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 receive. And there's a lot of pastors like that. All they're concerned about is just receiving, 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 receiving. $25,000 anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, still learn nothing. See, because provision always runs out. That's right. All right. So, so what I'm saying is we're, we're in a place now. And that's why we're ready to teach it more now. Yeah. We're teaching us heavy now. Because we're at a place where we are at a constant flow. Yeah. It's a constant flow. Yeah. It's a constant flow. Just a constant flow. Yeah. It's a constant flow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But long time. That's right. It's unsolicited. Yeah. We, we, we don't solicit nothing. We don't go out there asking another. We don't go, hey, come preach me. No, I don't know that kind of stuff. Listen, people do that. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't tell you how many letters and emails and calls we get. I'm in your area. I'm in your area. Let me, let me preach me. I've never in my life done that. And definitely refuse to do it now. Doc. No. No, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. See, if you give, it'll be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over men, and given to your bosom. In other words, money will start looking for you. It'll start looking for you, amen? amen. Let's, let's read the scripture now. Y'all gonna make me run out of time. Woo! Mark 4, uh, verse 3. Let me, let me go back there. Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. Went out to sow. Right? That's what sowers do. How many of y'all in here are sowers? So guess what you go out to do now? Go you go out to sow. Yes, you go out to sow. You go out to sow. You have, you have to go out to sow. Hallelujah. You have to go out to sow. And you got to sow without restrictions. You got to sow. Let me just give an example. of you have Because you have to have integrity when you sow. I went today. Uh, I was gassing up a vehicle because I, I got to take a little trip here. And, uh, you know, because I'm taking a trip and it's, it's, it's for ministry, I, I get to write it off, yeah. my gas. And so I had a guy come and ask me for some uh, gas money. And, uh, you know, the devil said, well, you know. So I, I, I paid for his gas on my you know, car. And, I, you know, I got the receipt because I keep receipts. Yeah. And the devil's like, man, you can, you can write that off too. Just throw that in there. Oh, come on. But see, integrity said, no, that was a seed. Right. And you don't keep record of seed. See, the Bible says, may he remember your offerings. God remembers your seed. God remembers your offerings now. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. Some offerings you won't forget if they were real precious. <laughs> Anybody ever saw a real, a real precious seed? You ain't forgot, boy. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay? But you don't try to keep a record of those things. Like that. All right? So let's go out to sow. So wherever you're going, you're going out looking to sow. You eating, but I'm available to sow. Right. You're going to the movies, but I'm available to sow. Right. Whatever, all right? And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Verse 5. Some, some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth. Did not have much earth, much ground. Now, seed needs ground. Yes. Yes. And immediately it sprang up. Immediately. Immediately. Lord, accelerate my harvest. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth, shallow ground. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. It withered away. So what you have, imagine this, is a picture of when you sow a seed, uh, very little ground, earth, so the, the roots can't go anywhere. So you might get a flower or a sprout come up, but... It's not the flower does not sustain the plant. The root does. The root is what pulls the nutrients out of the soil. The root is what, what goes down and finds water to, 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 to cause that process to happen. 
So you don't want, to, want it to immediately spring up unless, you know, again, can God do it? Yes, God can give you immediate turnaround on the harvest. Like that woman uh, there in 1 Kings 17, she got immediate turnaround. That was, a, that was the working of miracles. The working of miracles in the Old Testament, okay? But if, if normally if you don't have the working of miracles on your seed, you need process of time. You need some ground, you need some earth to give that thing time uh, to come up, okay? So, notice what happens here. Uh, go, go over to Mark 4, verse 27. 26, as the man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how, for the earth yields crops by itself. By itself. First the blade, then, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. Now, the thing about it is before you see ever see any of that, you're going to see uh, roots have to sprout below the ground. All right? Now, I, I, I found a video I want you to take a look at. If you all have that video available, it's about two minutes long of... Uh, of a lima bean. Y'all like lima beans, Deke? I know Deke likes some lima beans with some ham hock and smoked neck bones or something in there. Lima beans. Well, you, those are not magic beans. They, gotta, they come from a seed in the ground. Got it? So y'all take a moment. Now, when you watch this video, I want you to notice, look, clo look uh, closely, observe closely, and notice the, the surface of the ground. Notice what happens below the ground before you see anything above the ground. Go ahead. Yeah. See the white spots now? So what they did, they took several weeks and condensed it into two minutes. Time lapse, you understand? But what I wanted you to notice was how much activity happened below the ground before you ever saw an inkling of anything above ground. And it's easy to get discouraged when you don't see any activity, any evidence in the natural. But understand, the whole kingdom, the whole earth is a seed kingdom, it's a seed earth. And this is how it works even when you sow financial seed or sow peace seed or love seed, whatever it is. Yeah. Y'all understand that? Yeah. You sow peace seed. Your, your marriage in trouble, sow, sow some peace seed. Right. Peace. peace. Right. They still acting a fool. Did you sow the seed? Yeah. All right, I better move on from that. Praise <laughs> Lord. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Galatians chapter 6, please, verse 9. I still got a few more minutes, right? Yeah. Galatians 6, verse 9. I'll start at verse 7, actually. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Or you can't, you can't go around 
a circumvent God's system. For whatever man sows, what? That he will also reap. Right? That's easy to understand. Every seed produces after his own kind. Right? For what he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap what? Verse 9, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not, if we do not quit on our harvest. If we do not quit on our harvest, in due season. Get the Amplified, please. Same verse, Amplified. Amplified. And let us not lose heart, come on, and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right, for in and we shall reap if we do not, come on. So we don't ever want to loosen and relax our courage and, and faint and quit. All right? And he says, in due time at the appointed season. So there's an appointed season for the harvest on your seed. There's an appointed season for it. There's a time that grapes come up. There's a time that apples come up. There's a time that oranges come up. There's a time that, that uh, what's these things the lady have next to us? Those lychee nuts. Praise God. As a guy down the street has a whole, whole yard full of lychee nut trees. At, at the museum little art place down there. Yeah, I'm about to walk through there. <laughs> Get the message translation, same verse. Galatians 6 9, message translation, please. If you have that. So let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Go to Ecclesiastes, please. Go back to Ecclesiastes. Is this helping anybody tonight? Don't fool me. Is this helping anybody tonight? Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Verse 2, a time to be born and a time to die, or that's beginning and end. And then the same verse, with the same thought in mind, beginning and end, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. All right, so a lot of times we've understood, it as, understood that as, well, it's time to plant stuff, it's time to pluck up stuff, which means... I just take them out the ground. No, 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 no. This is beginning and end. Right. Time to be born, time to die. So beginning and end of, of the seed process is you plant, and at the end of the process, you pluck up. You read more, more modern translations, it'll say a time to reap the harvest. The same verse will say a time to reap the harvest. So there's a time for it. Got it? But you have to allow time to work in your life. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's get to the nitty-gritty here. And then we'll, we'll wind our way down to the end here. So here's the question. What do I do while I'm waiting for my harvest? What do I do while I'm waiting for my harvest? Number one, we just read in Galatians 6 verse 9, is we keep acting nobly and doing right. That's right. That's right. We keep acting nobly and doing right. We keep, we keep our head up. We keep talking right. We keep doing right. All right? That's what Galatians 6 9 said in the Amplified Bible about keep acting, about, uh, acting nobly and doing right. But let me show you what, it, what acting nobly and doing right looks like yeah, exactly. what has to happen when you've sown seed. How many sowers do I have in here now? Yeah. Okay. Go to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Because remember what, what, what Mark said, what Jesus said in Mark, that when you sow the seed, you, you rise by day and you sleep at night, the earth brings it up. So the earth's going to do the work, right? God and the earth, they're going to do the work for us. But there's some things we got to do to cultivate that. Deuteronomy 28, look at verse 1. It shall come to pass now, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because, why? You obey, you obey the voice of the Lord your God. So you got to make sure that while you're, after you've sown seed, you don't go out there and cut the food. When you've sown seed, you need to make sure you hear God's voice, obey God's voice, follow his commandments. Right. Now, why is it important to follow his commandments? Because what, what he's going to command, 
not just his commandments of doing right and wrong, his, his instruction, because instruction will lead you to your harvest. See, you sow in the kingdom or you sow for kingdom's sake, but you're going to reap out of Babylon. You're going to reap out of the world. So God has to lead you to your harvest. Your harvest isn't back in the church. Your harvest is out there in the world. So God has to lead you to where that new contract is or that new opportunity or where that increase is. All right? Now, notice what it says here. He's going to ble cause blessings to come on you and overtake you. Look at verse 12. Let's read one of these blessings here. Because if you put seed in the ground, you can't just leave it. Verse 12, here's the result of you obeying and, and following. The Lord will do what? Open, Open to you his. Good treasure. Now, what's his good treasure? The heavens, the heavens to give what? Rain. The rain to your land in its season. Rain. So it'll give your land proper uh, rain at the proper time. Because your seed, if you don't get rain on the ground, your seed will dry up and die. You got it? So he says to give uh, to your land, rain, I'm sorry, to give the rain to your land in its season. And now here's a little uh, clue here. I'm not going to spend too much time on that because that's next Wednesday. To bless the work of your hands. To bless the work of your hands. Where's my harvest? Well, where's your hands? See, if there's no work of your hands, you have no way to reap your harvest. Come on. Well, people just going to give to me. Well, you, people will give you a little. But I'm talking about the bumper crop. We're talking about bumper crop harvest here. We're talking about supernatural increase here. We're talking about, we're talking about jaw-dropping increase. And see, I know I may go against the grain a little bit when it comes to Word of Faith Camp. Because Word of Faith Camp, they pre a lot of people preach on sowing and reaping, but a lot of people don't talk about how to reap. They tell you, oh, you go, well, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's next week. But notice again, you need some rain on your land. You need some rain on your land. All right, so let's, let's add to that. Go to, to Malachi. Y'all know this Malachi, right? Malachi 3, we want rain, don't we? Yeah. All right, Malachi 3. Once I put the seed in the ground, I don't, I don't have to dig it up. I don't, I don't, don't ever touch the seed again. But I got to work the ground. I got to work the ground, don't I? Yes, sir. Ground. Mm-hmm. I got to keep that ground healthy and strong. Malachi 3 and uh, verse 10. Y'all know this one, don't you? Bring all the what? Into where? The storehouse. All right? That there may be food in my house, and try me now on this, as Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you, what? And pour out. Now, we just read Deuteronomy 28, verse 12. The windows of heaven are his treasures. They're going to give rain. Well, that's revelation. Yeah, that's, 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 that's revelation on this revelation. But the treasures of heaven, the windows of heaven, are bringing rain. You know, sometimes we get so spiritually deep, we miss the natural stuff God is saying here. <laughs> first, that's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, first the natural, then the spiritual. Okay? So he said, I'll open the windows of heaven. So much uh, blessing that you want room enough to receive it. Verse 11. Now, this is what you need now because when you, when you get seed in the ground, um, the, 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 remember the, the birds and the, and the bees and the, the pests, they're looking for some food too. The boll weevils, the worms, the right. So watch what your what else your tithe does. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. The devourer is coming for your seed, so that he will not destroy. Come on, what? The fruit of your ground. So the destroy the destroyer is coming to destroy the fruit of your ground. Well, why have I got in the harvest? Well, maybe it was coming up, but uh, the tithe wasn't there to protect the, the harvest, so it was eaten up. Mm -hmm. I sold. I sold $10. All of a sudden, here comes 500 and the transmission go out. That's 2500 That's devour. Amen. Come on, sir. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. He'll make sure the vine will bring forth, says the Lord of hosts. You got it? That's what the tithe does. The tithe protects your, your seed, protects your harvest, so you can actually get it. 
Because once you get it, all nations will call you blessed. Yes, sir. Amen. That's the scripture. For you'll be the delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. All right? Now, number two. So not only do we keep acting noble and doing right, number two, if you sold in faith, if you sold in faith, stay in faith. Stay in faith. Oh, that's good. That's good. You got that? Yes. If you sold in faith, stay, stay in, in faith. faith. What I say? What happens if you didn't sow in faith? Just go on about your business. Ain't nothing going to happen anyway. Pastor, why is that a big deal? Because a lot of times people try sowing. You don't try nothing in faith. Faith is, is the assurance. Faith is the title D. Faith is substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. If you're in faith, you sow because you know you're getting harvested. You don't, you don't try, you don't experiment with, with sowing. Well, didn't the Bible say try me now in this? God said try him. He didn't say try tithing. He said try him. That word try actually means to prove him. Prove him. In other words, do this and prove that he is who he is and will do what he says he'll do. So you, don't ever, you should never experiment with sowing. Amen? Amen? Because you got to sow in faith. And once you sow in faith, you got to stay in faith. Amen. All right, Mark 4, 26. Again, the scripture we've been basing everything on. Again, watch what this guy does. The man scattered seed on the ground. Uh -huh. verse what, look at verse 27, what faith looks like. He sleeps by night and rises by day. He sleeps by night, rises by day. He doesn't keep going out there looking at like, I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. No, he sleeps by night and rises by day. He said, he sleeps by night, rises by day, and the seeds just sprout and grow. He himself, he don't even know how. I don't even know how this, how this works. I just know I put the seed in there, boom, it comes up. That's all I do. So when you sow in faith, you have to stay in faith. Don't keep going out there and questioning your seed. Am I going to get a harvest? Am I going to get a harvest? Ooh, I hope something comes up. See, let me ask, is this helping anybody for real? Yeah. Oh, See, because I, I, I feel like, see, for me, I'm so, so persuaded about seed time and harvest, I don't even have these thoughts. Now, I didn't start that way. But I've been doing this now, my wife and I both, so long, so ferociously, so voraciously, so loquaciously, That we don't have thoughts any longer about, whew, is it going to come up? We're just fully persuaded now. All right? And I want you to be that way. That's why these testimonies that we hear around here are so good. You know, when they're good. <laughs> that, that people get evidence of, of, of man, the Lord... Bless me. He increased me. Harvest came in. Okay? All right, so this man, he sleeps by day, by night, rise by day, because the seed's going to, the ground's going to do all the work. Okay? Remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, you don't have to turn over there. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6 and 7, it says, uh, one plants, one waters, God gives the increase. God gives the increase. You got to be in faith that God's going to give the increase. When I sow my seed, God's going to give the increase. When I sow my seed, God's going to make this happen. Well, I, don't, I don't try to worry. I don't have to pray. Lord, please, please, Lord, Lord, make, bring me back a good harvest. No. Yeah, you ain't talking to anybody else about it? If you sow in faith, stay in faith. Thank you, Lord. My harvest is coming. The process works. I put it in ground. The ground's going to bring forth all by itself. God's going to give the increase from it. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to keep checking on it. Lord, when is my harvest coming? Uh-oh. You better watch that. Yeah. Doubt's creeping in. Yeah, yeah. When is it going to break through? Watch that because doubt's creeping in. You have to watch them. I'm telling you, it happens. Yeah. It, it happens to your neighbor. I know it may not happen to you, but the person next to you is happening in their lives. Lord, when is this thing going to break out now? now? When, 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 is, when, is, when is that harvest coming? Well, be careful when you're to allow, to allow doubt 
Make sure you don't allow doubt to creep in there. All right? Praise God. All right. Let's look one more place here. Because if you, you got to keep acting nobly and doing right, which includes obeying God and tithing. Obeying God and tithing. Amen? Yes. You, don't, you also, and I know we say this all the time, but you also don't want to tithe and not sow. Because the tithe and not sow, you don't, you, you negate the, the, the blessing of the tithe. And we just read what the blessing of the tithe is. Yeah. Yeah. To open the windows of heaven for you. Yeah. To pour out rain on your land. Yes, to make sure your vine brings forth. Make sure your, 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 your plants aren't eaten up. Yes. So there ought to be a seed. <laughs> Producing something. If not, you just got muddy ground. You understand what I'm saying to you? See, tithing and sowing work hand in hand. And they're not the same thing, but they complement each other. You got it? All right. Number three, last one. Last one is keep your joy up. Keep your joy up. Keep your joy up. Look at Psalm 126, verse 5. Psalm 126, verse 5. Those who sow in tears. tears. Why are there tears? Because there's precious hurt. hurt. <laughs> so it might be tears when you sow it, but how are you going to reap it? In joy. See, you don't, you, sometimes you may not sow in joy. You're right, you're right, you're right. Well, okay, let me, let me help you. Uh, sometimes you may so enjoy. I'm just so glad God I can bring you the twenty-five dollars. Praise God! I'm, I'm happy. Ooh, I'm so happy. But in verse six, he's talking about precious seed. Precious. If you read that in the uh, when it says he who continually goes forth bearing seed for sowing, or in the King James says bearing precious seed. So that precious seed hurts. Amen. So when you sow it, it might be some tears. <laughs> right? But it can't be tears when you want to reap. Okay, you're going to reap in joy or reap with joy. So that means you've got to keep your joy in the process and fight off that uh, separation anxiety, fight off that giver's remorse, fight off that doubt and unbelief, right? How, how did the Bible say uh, about uh, Abraham in, in Romans 4? It said Abraham was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So Abraham kept, kept his faith strong by rejoicing, by, by, all right, praise God, I got a harvest coming in. I got a harvest coming in. Yes. Praise God, we got a harvest coming in. Yes. Praise yes. God. I believe you got for my harvest. It's, it's on the way. Yes. On the way. Yes. And every day, I mean, my wife to this, to this day does this. Every time I go to the mailbox, my check here? Yes. Every yes. single yes. day. It's my check here. What check? I don't know, but I got some seed out there. Y'all right. know you what I'm saying? Yeah. Praise the Lord. My wife did get a check yesterday, praise God. They, they just sent it to the wrong house. I had to go. <laughs> they sent it to the old house, praise God. But it was, uh, listen, you better believe it. Uh, yeah, it was there since Saturday. Big check. And I had to, I, we found out where it was. And uh, I had to get in my car. And I, and, now what happened, I got in, I got in the car. And I wanted to speed. Speed. Because, yeah. you know, I live way out of town. So I was trying to get from my house <laughs> back. <laughs> don't it feel like out of town, don't it? Yeah. Cell phones don't even work out there. But I'm, I'm trying to speed. And, and all of a sudden here I heard, slow down. Slow down. Slow down. That's your harvest. Nobody can bother that. Can't nobody bother that. You understand that? All right. Tithers have protected harvest. Right. You understand that? Yeah. So, so uh, I know this works. Praise God. You just got to stay rejoicing. Yeah, I'm telling you, I know this works. Praise God. Uh, so you got to reap in joy. Amen? Now, joy, we know from Nehemiah, I think it's 18 about the joy of the Lord is our strength. So joy equals strength. Right? So you got, that's why you got to keep your joy up. 
Because remember, we don't want to faint and grow weary while we're waiting on the harvest. Right, right. All right? You'll induce easy to reap if you faint not. Well, wh why do you faint? Because you grow weary. Why are you weary? Because you don't have any strength. So you got to keep your joy up to keep your strength up. I'm talking about your harvest. See, we, we think about that when it comes to, uh, I believe in God, but da, da 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 But I'm talking about your harvest depends on you keeping your joy up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise God. Because the devil's going to come along and put all the kind of pressure on you yes, to get your joy to just... Yeah. Yeah. And when, listen, be careful whenever your joy is dried up. Because when your joy is dried up, you say all kind of stuff out your mouth. Yes. I'm talking to somebody here, right? When, when your joy dries up, you, you, you're, you're liable to let anything fly. Hey, how you doing today? I'm all right. Oh, joy. You got a joy issue now. I'm all right. How's it going? Well, you know, it could be better. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 you're in trouble at that point. Yeah. See, because you, your joy, go, go to Joel 1, 12. Joel chapter 1, verse 12. Joel chapter 1, verse 12. From the King James. King James Version. Joel 1, verse 12. The vine is dried up. The vine is dried up. And the fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even... All the trees of the field are withered. 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 Tell me why they're withered. From the sons of men. So when your joy dries up, all your harvests dry up. Woo wee! See, when 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 there when there's no joy, your, your pastor, how does that work? I don't know how it works. I don't know how I turn the key on the car and it crank up. I don't know how that works. I just know when I turn the key, the car cranks up. So I don't know how joy affects my harvest. I just know that he told me that this thing's dry up because our joy is dried up. So my lightning fast brain says, keep your joy up. Keep your joy up and my harvest has a chance. Because if my joy is, is up, my strength is up. And if, I, if my strength is up, I don't faint and grow weary. And in due season, I'll reap if I don't faint. Now, praise God. Let's look at one last place here. One last place. My looks at the clock on the wall, my time is up. <laughs> That's how they say it there, Radio Land. <laughs> radio Land, people say, right, looks at the wall, the clock on the wall, my time is up. I got to keep my joy up because that's going to keep a constant flow. When, when I heard, oh man, where is the minister at? Well, he dipped out on me. But I heard him preaching about that, about when praises go up, blessings come down. It, we used to think it was just a song, but it's a real process. When we release praise to God, blessings flow down. God opens the windows of heaven for us, okay? So, so uh, in this scripture here in, in Psalm 71, Psalm 71, verse 14, just one verse. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. Now, hope is expectation, right? Which never disappoints. So if I've sown a seed and I have real expectation of a, of a, of a harvest, of a, of a reaping, that's where my hope is, then, then, if I hope, my hope produces a praise. Hello? What produces the praise again? My hope, not the manifestation. He said, I will hope continually. Notice he says, I'll hope and I'll praise more and more. So he's praising at just the hope. 
See, if you got to wait on manifestation of praise, you don't have any hope. Anybody with real hope, they praise already. Right? If you have an expectation, you're praising God already. Amen? When Marco and Christian were in here on Sunday, they praising God already. The baby ain't even shown up yet. They, they, they don't even know what they're having, how many they have. They don't know anything. They just know it's something different. It's something in there. So they're praising God already. You tell a child tomorrow we're going to walk this the world, they're going to hardly sleep. They're going to be all around the house pray, uh, with praise and praise and praise and praise. And mom, mama taking me to Disney World. Yeah. Expectation. Yeah. When you have expectation, it will, you will praise more and more. So I can tell those of you who have a hope for a harvest by your praise, by your rejoicing, by your joy. People who look around, walk around sad, I know there's they, they, they uh. nothing, nothing coming. Nothing's coming. They must, they must not have anything coming. Ain't, ain't nothing on, on the horizon. They waiting on Christmas to come before they get happy. They waiting on tax time again to be happy. I don't want no tax time joy. No. That runs out every year. Yeah. They keep proving that every year it runs out. <laughs> Praise God. No. When I have seed in the ground, my seed brings up a harvest. I got so excited about two, three weeks ago, I walked outside and I saw uh, a few av few avocados. They're about this big. I mean, I had to look hard because, you know, on that, the avocados are green, the leaves are green. So you got to really look for them. But I knew it was about that time. I remember last it was about that time. And I, went, I saw a few little, little avocado bud just, ooh -wee. Then I went back out there uh, this, this past week, and uh, they're getting bigger. Yeah. Yeah. So look at them. Almost, Almost guacamole time. Yeah. <laughs> Expectation. Yeah. See, if you're looking for something, you're expecting something, you, you, man, you don't, you don't have to worry about your joy being down. Right. If you're expecting something from God. Right. I want you to tonight, as you leave, remember that video. Remember that video? It's working. That well before there was any evidence or any sign of anything above the ground, those seeds had already, mm -hmm. those roots were going down before anything was coming up. Yeah. Those roots were going down to find water, to pull nutrients. In fact, they, they shot out several branches. Yeah. Yeah. They made sure they had several branches shot out so they could collect nutrients from everywhere. So that when that sprout would finally come up, it'd have some support. And it wouldn't just wither away. And you could get you eventually get you a pot of lima beans. Yes, sir. With a ham hock on the inside of that. Come on now. Smoke neck bone or smoke turkey neck or something in that thing. And cornbread. Come on now. That, that sounds good right next to some. White rice and some turkey wings. But you don't get that without a seed. But it had to have time. Had to have time. Had to have time. And if you give it time, stay in faith. Keep rejoicing. Keep acting nobly. Keep doing good. Eventually, the harvest comes up, and I'm going to tell you here by, by experience, you'll step into a flow. Come on now, don't get mad at that now. You'll step into a flow. And when you get in that flow, boy, that changes everything. Because when you get into a flow, man, it's, it's nice to not think about broke. When you used to think about broke all the time. It's nice, nice, it's nice to not ever think about broke. It's nice to never be close to broke ever again. And I know some of y'all, you are already ballers and shot callers, but I'm talking about in God. You know, you, you become that in your provision. You don't live off your provision, you live off your harvest. He wants you to live off your harvest. And increase more and more.
Amen? Amen. Don't quit on your harvest. Don't quit on your harvest. If you've, so, if you've been sowing, it's coming up. Now, <clears throat> Pastor, what, what if I sowed a seed 10 years ago and nothing came up? Well, you might have, something might have happened to it. It might have been bad ground. Birds might have got it. Devourer might have got it. It might have sprang up immediately and dried up. Or you might have canceled it with your own words. But it's all, it's all right. It's all right. You can start over. Sow some, sow some, uh, some uh, corn, some grape seed, and some olive, some olive seeds, and you'll start getting harvest flowing in all the time. Yeah. See, you push it. See, sometimes you got to push yourself to sow a precious seed. That's, that's, that, that's that wine and oil, especially the oil. It's precious. I mean, it's, it hurts. But I'm t- and we've talked about this. We've talked about this before. Uh, breakout seeds. I know the breakout seed. Matter of fact, my wife and I already, we, 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 we came into covenant uh, about two weeks ago. I told her, I said, I said, there's a number, there's a seed we got to sow a little here, here coming up. I said, I need you to agree with me for it. And we got to save. We, you know, we got to put together, put that money together. Because they ain't just got, you know, money we got laying around the house. We got to put together this particular seed we got to sow here. Because I'm believing God for another level financially to flow in our lives. But I know it's going to come through the seed. So she agreed with me. And I don't know where it's going to come from, but, but God, he'll give it to us. Because he gives seed to the sower. Amen? Because there's a breakout seed and there's, there's, a, there's a seed that's, like we said, it's uh, precious. And you sow it in tears, but when you start reaping, boy, woo. Go, go back to that Psalm 126. Read, read that. What, what verse was that? Verse 5 we read? Yes. Let's read verse 5 and 6 together. Yes. 5 and 6 together. Psalm 126, verse 5 and 6. Watch this. Those are sowing tears. Come on. Verse 6. Come on. He who continually shall what? Shall what? So don't allow doubt in there. Because if you've sown, you shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. Bringing your sheaves with him. Ain't no doubt about it. Your harvest is coming up. Amen? Y'all receive that tonight? Come on, give God a praise and rejoicing tonight. Hallelujah for the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you tonight for the seed, for the word, for the instruction, for the wisdom. Thank you, Lord, that we've learned that every seed requires time and a season, Lord. Thank you for those special times when you accelerate harvest. But, God, we understand that, Lord, day to day, that we want longevity. We want to be those who continually bring forth, uh, though, though we, we want to be those who continually go forth uh, sowing seed, yes. precious seed. And you said if we do that, we'll doubtless come again doubtless. rejoicing. Doubtless. We'll doubtless yeah. reap. We'll doubtless. Yeah. Well, we have, we have a doubtless harvest. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we get all the doubt out of our lives, out of our hearts and minds, that if we, when we sow, we do reap, it comes up in a mighty harvest. Thank you, Lord, that every one of your people in this place tonight, I speak this, Lord, that they begin to step into a flow. Even as Pastor Kim and I have stepped into a flow. Thank you that, God, that that flow begins operating in their lives, that, Lord, that there'll be, even as we continue to sow, there'll be so much that comes in, Lord. So much that comes in because we continue to flow and, and stay in that flow. We, we stay in that flow all of our lives, Lord. So I pray that flow, Lord, begins to operate in everybody's lives. Those who will work this process, Lord, because you've given it to us. You've given it to us, Lord. We're not, we're not trying to manipulate you or trick, trick you out of anything. You gave us this process. Hallelujah. So as they work it, Lord, continue to bless them, increase them, multiply them. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right, praise God. Get on your feet tonight.